Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Hope you're doing well. Time for some more rookie deep dives, and it's a good time for it. The Seahawks are currently in the middle of their rookie mini camps. Uh, if anything compelling comes out of those mini camps, I'll make a video on it later today or tomorrow. But for now, we're going to stick to the plan. We're going to continue to evaluate these players based off what we know they can do based off what they showed in college. And I'm going to do it for all of our drafted players, maybe even a UDFA or two. But uh, these first four guys, so today is number four. This is really, really crucial. These are some of the most important picks that the Seahawks have made in recent memory. And as of right now, it looks like they nailed them, but uh, time will tell. So today we're going to talk about my favorite pick in the whole draft in terms of a combination of the player and the value. Um, I, I don't doubt that Charles Cross is going to be the best player that we got in this draft. Almost certainly the, uh, the left tackle being as important as it is combined with his very strong abilities makes him a logical candidate to be our best player from this draft. But Lucas, I didn't see him being there at 72. I didn't even know if he was going to be there at 40 or 41. I heard rumors that he was going to slip into the first, and I definitely thought he was going to be gone in the second. So the tremendous value of this pick makes it stand out to me even over the cross and Mafe selections, which I both really, really liked, obviously. But that's just to do with the draft pick. That's just to do with the actual act of drafting him. Let's talk about Abraham Lucas based off what he can do, what he brings to the table. And if you are a Seahawks fan, there's a good chance that you are either a Cougars fan or you at least watch the Cougars more than the average college football team. So you may already be somewhat familiar with Abraham Lucas and his work, but uh, let's uh, dive in anyway and see what we can find about this guy. What makes him special? So obviously, like I said, he was a Cougar, Wazoo, right tackle, pretty pure right tackle to me as well. Um, I, I saw some places suggest that he moves inside to guard. I, I don't see it. I saw some places indicate that he could play some left tackle. I think he tried to say he could play left tackle. I don't see it. I see a pretty pure right tackle, and I'm not looking to mess around with that the way we mess around sometimes with these players like Damian Lewis, Ethan Posick. These are guys who had their career suffer because we played them at suboptimal positions, so trying to avoid that. Lucas is about 23 and a half. I think he turns 24 in October, so he's a little bit older. But again, that's to be expected with this COVID draft class. <clears throat> His size is above, well above average for an offensive lineman. Height is six foot six and a half, almost 86th percentile. I think that's probably a little bigger than you would expect. But generally speaking, right tackles are going to be the tallest position on your offensive line. I think. So that's not terribly out of the ordinary. Uh, he weighs in at 315 pounds, 63rd percentile, which is a little bit interesting because a lot of right tackles, and we're starting to move away from this, right tackles tend to be the maulers. The right tackles tend to be the guys who weigh like 325, 330, you know, borderline guards. So Abraham Lucas, even though he's heavier than the average offensive lineman, I do think it's fair to say that he's a little bit of a, it, it's at least a little bit lighter than you might expect from the right tackle spot. And that also informs his specific skill set. Um, his arms are about 34 inches, which puts him in the 59th percentile, which is, um, it, it lines up with what you would expect. Obviously, wingspan or arm length is really important for left tackles because they're dealing, with, they're, they're more of a, uh, pass rush protector and the right tackle it matters more than it does the interior lineman but it matters less than the left tackle so his arms being about 34 inches 59th percentile is fine perfectly adequate uh, his hands however are very big for the offensive line 10 and a half inches 85th percentile his 10 yard split is good 1.76 so 64th percentile now Again, that is comparing him to interior offensive linemen that tend to be a lot heavier than him. 
but it is better than the average and it it, it does clue me in to what he will be able to do on a football field and it's something that I saw when I watched his tape it's the ability to move in space the ability to play in space his 40 time is historically good for offensive linemen 4.92 that's faster than Charles Cross. That's faster than almost, I might have been the fastest time of any offensive lineman in this year's draft or last year's draft outside of the sub 300 pound guys like uh, I think Kellen Dishk. So 4.92 is close to as fast as it gets for an offensive lineman. So this guy is capable of moving at a rate that it is very rare to find in offensive linemen who go through the combine process. Vertical jump is not great, 27 inches. I don't know if that's going to come up on a football field. Uh, his broad jump is good, 107 inches, solid. But where he really stands out, where he really turns your head, are his th three-cone drill and his 20-yard shuttle. 7.25 three-cone drill, 98th percentile. One of the best offensive line three-cone drill times ever. His 20-yard shuttle, 4.4 seconds, 97th percentile. In these areas, in terms of the ability to move quickly and uh, change direction, agility, the ability to uh, do the things that you're going to have to do as a reach blocker, as somebody blocking at the second level and the third level, he excels. His uh, bench press reps were 24, which isn't great, 44, 44th percentile. But as me and the Hawks Nest were talking about a little bit in our stream the other day, the, he's got long, he, his longer than average arms are going to have a negative effect on his ability to bench press. So I think the concern around that is a little bit muted because he's going to have longer arms than most guards and centers who are bench pressing beyond him. I will say I think it's fair to point out that he could stand to get a little bit stronger, but we'll talk more about that in a second here. So those are his measurables. He has some incredibly good ones in certain areas. Uh, there are a couple areas where you, you might be left wondering a little bit, but overall, honestly, this is, this is a pretty spectacular set of testing numbers for a right tackle. And it's not just the testing numbers with him, of course, it's also what he did on the field. So... He had a very long career at Wazoo. He's played, I believe, he started in every game for his uh, four-year college career, because uh, not 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 counting the red shirt, uh, third, except I believe he sat out the bowl game that Wazoo played in because he was getting ready for the draft. But this is a guy who showed tremendous durability, and he built up a lot of experience. So let's take a look at this. 2017, he red shirts. 2018, he starts all 13 games for the Cougars. Pro Football Focus ranks him as the 14th best offensive tackle in the nation. 14th best in the nation. And the number two, as a redshirt freshman, the number two pass-blocking offensive tackle in all of college football. Now, the level of competition he was playing was not great. The best team he played and the only really good team he played in 2018 was the Washington Huskies. But he nevertheless was very impressive against that admittedly weak schedule. He made the freshman All-American team from the USAT and the Athletic. He made the All-Pac-12 second team. And he was the three-time Washington State Offensive Lineman of the Week. How did he build on this? In 2019, he started all 13 games again. PFF had him as the fourth best tackle in the nation. Fourth best as a redshirt sophomore. He was the number one pass blocking tackle in the country, according to PFF. Played almost 950 snaps. Almost all of them were pass block snaps. 786 pass block snaps. So this guy's going back into pass protection 55 plus times a game. He allowed three sacks, two hits on the QB, and two QB hurries. So 17 QB pressures across almost 800 pass block snaps and this is as a red shirt sophomore now the level of competition did pick up a little bit this year he played games against utah oregon and air force all these teams ended up ranked 
but it's still not the best. He's not playing in the SEC. I understand that. He's playing the Pac-12. He's getting to play against some pretty bad teams. But nevertheless, he is still playing very effectively on the rare occasions he does get to play a really good team. He made all Pac-12 second team again. He was the offensive lineman of the week for WSU once. And he was the Pac-12 offensive lineman of the week once as well. So his legend continues to grow. Honestly, he probably could have entered the draft at this point and been a prospect of note after 2019. Of course, he didn't. And um, legally, I don't know if he could have. I think he could have in theory. But uh, I think even at that point, he would have gotten some attention in the draft. Uh, 2020 was a lost season for almost everybody in the Pac-12. We all know that. Um, he only played four games. That's all he could play. Um, he was the fourth best tackle in the Pac-12, according to PFF. 272 snaps, 183 of them pass block snaps, so things started to even out a little bit for him. He allowed all of four QB pressures on the season across 183 pass block snaps. Uh, his only elite opponent was USC. They were the only team that ended up ranked that he played against in 2020. But um, in this small sample size, that eh, I don't think you can learn a lot from it other than he is starting to build up some experience as a run blocker. He did make the All-Pac-12 second team again. He made the AP first team for the All-Pac-12 team. So he was considered to be one of the best players in the conference already. I, um, I I have to believe he would have declared had it not been for the fact that, um, well, he only got to play four games. So he came back for one more year in 2021, and it was probably the best year of his career, and it's why he ended up going in the top 75 of the draft. So in 2021, he started 12 games. So for those of you keeping track at home, he started 13 games, 13 games, 12 games, and then 4 games. That is 42 starts. Did not miss any starts during that 4-year stretch. Played in every game except for, I believe, Wazoo's bowl game. And that was because he was trying to protect himself. Understandable. Uh, in 2021, he played 801 snaps. Only 477 pass block snaps. So, Wazoo started to run the ball a little bit more. Uh, they went from the air raid to, I, I think it's called the run and gun, and they actually started running the ball more. Now, I can definitely acknowledge the fact that Abraham Lucas is a better pass blocker than a run blocker. However, to say that he doesn't know how to run block, it, it's out of date information. Yes, the first three years, uh, well, I would say the first two years he was in college football and playing, he probably only saw a grand total of 300, maybe 350 run block snaps, if I had to guess. But the last two years, and 2021 is the most notable one, the Cougars actually ran the ball at a at least semi-respectable clip. 60-40, 65-35. So he did it a lot. Now, I'm not saying he did it great, but I don't think he did it badly either. And the idea that he just can't do it or never showed that he could do it at all is simply not true. Now, across the 477 pass block snaps he had, he allowed zero sacks, one hit, eight hurries for a grand total of nine QB pressures. So his pass block snaps went down dramatically from 2019 to 2021, but the rate at which he allowed pressure actually went down. Um, and almost every pressure he gave up was just a hurry. No hits, no sacks. His PFF grade for the year was 78.6. So a lot of the uh, downswing that he had was associated with the fact that he wasn't pass blocking as much. That is admittedly the case, but I just want to push back on this idea that he's just a pass blocker and nothing more. If that's the case, he would have been docked a lot more in 2021. He made the um, all Pac-12 first team this year um, by pretty much everybody. I'm pretty sure they all had him on the first team. Uh, he did get to play three ranked opponents, Utah, BYU, and Oregon. Um, I actually recently went back and rewatched the tape against the Oregon game to kind of really get an idea of what he's bringing to the table. And um, that was probably not one of his finest moments going up against uh, Thibodeau. But you still see the stuff that makes him special, makes him interesting, makes him potentially great. 
and that is going up against as good a competition as you are going to find in any conference, much less the Pac-12. So, that's what he did in his career. He is a fairly unimpeachable pass protector. In fact, over his career, not just 2021, but his whole career, PFF graded him at 91 for pass blocking. Um, I, I, I will continue to insist that the NFL right now is a pass-first league. So the ability to pass block is more important than your ability to run block. And that is starting to be the case for right tackles as well. Now, can he run block well enough to make Pete Carroll happy, make uh, Kenneth Walker the third happy? That, I will admit there are some questions around, but I don't think they're the questions that a lot of people have. So let's take a look at what Abraham Lucas can do based off his actual, actually watching him play. He's got a great combination of length and upper body power, which makes it hard to get around him. Like, he handles speed rushers quite well. I watched the Oregon game, and I saw some guys get the edge on him once or twice, but that's Oregon. That's tip of the dough. That's the best the Pac-12 has to offer. Um, even against Oregon, on a lot of plays, you're just not going to be able to get around him and beat him to the edge to get to the quarterback. It, it's He uses his length well. He uses his lateral mobility well. You're just not going to get around him. He's got a high football IQ, which he has cultivated over all the starts he made, and he's strong enough to make it hard to go through him too. So power rushers, the guys who are going to try to go through you and not around you, he's really good at being able to handle as well. So he's the whole package when it comes to pass blocking. Uh, like I said earlier, he was extremely durable in college. He's got a great physique. Um, he, he doesn't have the weight that you would typically expect from a normal right tackle, but I think that's totally fine. His skill set is a little different from the average right tackle. He's extremely smart when mirroring pass rushers. He doesn't get out of position. He doesn't get impatient. He just keeps shadowing and shadowing and shadowing until the rusher commits and then he engages him. He keeps his balance well. I saw some plays where he would block two guys on the same play, just shift from one to the other and keep his balance. He's very good at stonewalling the outside in moves. So if you try to basically beat him to the edge and then try to move inside on him, he's good at taking that out of the equation. He's got very powerful hands. He's got a lot of pop in his punch. Uh, he's got good technique with his latches. Once he gets a hold of you as an offensive lineman, he's very good at keeping you. And it's just hard to break away from him. He has those big hands that I talked about. He's also, and this is going to be something that's really important as we move forward. He has the athletic ability to play in space. So I watched that Oregon game. I watched every snap of the offense. And one thing that I noticed that really got me excited were... Wazoo calls a couple bubble screens to his side, and he's peeling out from the line of scrimmage all the way out to the cornerback to block him. Um, I saw a, a clip of him doing a, uh, uh, there was a running play, I, I think it might have been against Arizona, where he peels off the line of scrimmage and is running forward to take out a linebacker, no, it, I think it was actually a safety at the line of scrimmage to spring the running back for a touchdown. So he's running down the field to make these blocks. He's engaging with players that start the play 8 to 10, maybe even 12 yards away from him. And he looks good doing it. He looks natural doing it. So he has the athletic ability to go make blocks in space, go engage players that are far away from where he initially lines up. It's not all about blocking the guy who's right in front of him. It's about going to a place and opening up a hole. And Lucas, with his crazy good testing numbers in the 20-yard shuttle and the three-cone drill and the 40-yard dash, and to a certain extent the 10-yard split, that tells you that he can do that. That tells you that he can get out there and throw those blocks. So that's maybe... The most interesting thing about him, that's something that Brandon Shell couldn't do. That's something that Dwayne Brown, at his advanced age, can't really do anymore. But it's something that Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas showed that they can do. Um, when it comes to run blocking, he can generate some movement. He's got enough strength to push his guys back. I saw several plays where he had success just pushing his guy back. Um, he plays with good aggression as well. 
He he plays with a ferocity. He plays with uh, aggressiveness. These are things that you look for in an offensive lineman. Even if he doesn't always have the pure ferocity and the mauler ability that you sometimes look for in an offensive lineman, he plays with the mentality of one. And I think that for all that people are concerned about his ability to run block, these tell me that these are things that he might be able to pick up on after hitting the weight room for a year. Now, let's talk about some of the shortcomings of Abraham Lucas. I think that pretty much sums up all the things that excite me about him, the things that make me feel like he's going to make a great pro, and that we may have our tackle situation handled for the next decade plus. But he's obviously not a perfect prospect. There is a reason why you got him in the third. There is a reason why, after a lot of post-combine hype, he ended up going where I thought he was going to go before the combine started. Let's break down those reasons why so we can understand what he might not be able to do and what he might need to work on in the coming years. So, because he is tall, he's not great at the leverage game. He can get out leveraged by smaller defensive ends. I think that's going to be one of the issues that he faces in the NFL, losing the leverage battle. Which is another reason why, by the way, I really don't want to see him move inside to guard. I, I don't see that working because he's too tall. He could stand to get stronger, like I said earlier. He could improve his anchor and his run blocking in general if he got a little bit stronger, especially his lower body strength. I think his lower body strength could use work. I like his upper body strength more than his lower body strength. He does pick up a few too many penalties, false starts, occasional holding. Not terrible or anything. We're not talking about, um, what was the name of that guy? Yakamimi, um, the guy who just couldn't stop getting penalties. But um, he, he does get penalized a little more than you would like. I will say this. I think that he shows he can play in space and make plays at the second and third levels on a football field. But I don't think it's totally translated the way the testing numbers showed. Like, according to the testing numbers, this should be a historically great right tackle playing in space. Like a Jason Kelsey, but at the right tackle position. I don't think he did that at Wazoo, so I think that his insane measurables are going to need a little bit of work to fully come out on a football field, but I think it's good, and this just shows that it has room to get better. So that isn't even really a full criticism of him. Um, there are some concerns that even though he's really good at dealing with edge rushers at the NCAA level, like you don't beat him with speed, I think there is some concern, but from some people that the NFL speed rushers are going to be a little bit faster and he's not going to have the same success rate. Um, this is probably just something he's going to have to get better at, and I would expect him to because he was so good at it in college. But he is 23, so physically he's pretty much capped out outside of a little bit of strength he can add. So if he gets to the NFL level and the speed rushers are just blowing past him because he, he just loses the edge he had on them in college then you may have to move him to guard. And you move him to guard, I don't know if that's going to work, and that's where you can start running into the problem of him just not quite being able to cut it. Um, I'm personally not too worried about it. I, I think that he showed so much ability to handle speed rushers in college that he should be able to at least hold his own in the NFL, but a couple scouts did have that concern. All right. That's it on Abraham Lucas for me. I really like this guy. I'm really impressed we got him. I love that we got a right tackle whose focus is pass blocking. I love that we got a, pa a right tackle who is clearly meant to be a pass blocker. It tells me that this offense is going in a direction that I like, and I'm really excited to see how we incorporate his skill set in. So let me know what you guys think of Abraham Lucas. My favorite pick, not our fav not my favorite Seahawks rookie, but my favorite Seahawks draft pick. So tomorrow we're going to start on the day three guys. I may have a little bit less to say about those guys because they're later round picks and they often don't have the um, unimpeachable blue chip abilities or else they would have been day one or day two picks. But we're going to do what we can. I, I liked our day three picks a lot for the most part as well. So I will dive into that starting tomorrow. But uh, until then, just let me know what you think about Abraham Lucas. Go Hawks.